I know it's been a while, but welcome to another episode of Jim's Up My Garden. Okay, so it's that time of year now where we can put the uh, the broad beans in now. I must admit, I don't grow broad beans every year. Uh, I've not grown them for a few years now, actually. But uh, basically because I'm the only one in my family that like broad beans. Now, they're not to everybody's taste, um, but I, I really like broad beans. And they're nice. Um, to eat them in a lot of different ways to be honest with you. And it's nice just to have a few um, thrown in with something else. But anyway, if you want to grow broad beans, I would suggest now is the best time to uh, to plant them. Uh, you can plant them right the way through into February, uh, but if you plant them now, you can get them started. And uh, what they'll tend to do is, uh, if you plant them in the ground now, what happens is they, they tend to bush out uh, next year. So rather than just having one stem, and uh, you know the beans coming off that you'll have multiple stems coming off the same plant um, and you'll uh, basically you'll get more beans per plant so the way to do it it's quite easy what you need to do there's two there's two golden there's two golden rules to growing um, broad beans um, get your pot what you need is wet compost um, this compost basically is already wet as you can see you know it's already damp you don't want it too damp this time of year obviously because you can encourage fungus and stuff like that to grow uh, but what you need to do is fill the pots up uh, but I don't know if you can see this but the the compost is already wet um, and all I've done is um, poured some water into the, uh, the bag of compost um, so that it's you know that it's nice and wet now what you don't want to do is don't try and plant your beans into dry compost and then water them afterwards. It, it doesn't tend to work too well if you do that. Uh, and what you don't want to do is compact it too much either. If you just put it in like that, reasonably loose. Now you will need to water these occasionally, maybe once once a week or once a fortnight over the winter months whilst they're starting to grow. Uh, also just keep your eye on them, don't let them dry out, but you don't want them to be too wet. Because uh, obviously if we do get a frost, you know, you don't want it to, to damage the plant. But they are hardy little plants, you know, having said that. So, we'll, we'll, we'll just do these. Uh, how many have we got there? Eight. Now, I'm not going to grow too many of these. Because, um, you know, I, I typically grow lots of the same thing. Um, but because there's only me that eats them, I'm only going to grow, um, for myself, probably about eight plants. Uh, possibly a dozen plants. I might put a few more in after this. But, uh, so, uh, the beans come from... Um, Mr. Father Girl, and these are um, these are a nice little variety that I've grown before. Um, I think you can see the the variety there. Right, so uh, you get 50 seeds in here, which is more than enough, really. Now, some people are tempted to put in a couple of seeds in each pot, but I wouldn't suggest you do that. Just put one seed in. So these these seeds are good until 2020. I'll say I'm only going to grow a few, so these will do me for a few years. So, when you get the beans out, they look very similar to um, look very similar to run beans. Obviously, runner beans look like that, um, but the 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 kind of flat. Now, what I typically do is just get the bean on its side, push it in. You want to go in about about two inches deep um, into each of the pots like that. Push it in about two inches. The compost isn't too compacted at all, it's quite loose. You don't need much moisture um, in there to get them started. So push that in like that. Give them a bit of a give them a bit of a tap and get the get them covered over. Don't don't be tempted to sort of 
you know compact them down like you do with some other like brassicas you always try and make the ground nice and firm that's just nice and loose like that there's moisture in there enough to get them started um, I'll put the, these beans back in here now if you as I say if you grow them this time of year what you tend to get is a much bushier plant and, 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 and more better beans um, per, per plant and obviously you know you want to get the the best you can out of your plant now I've done eight because I know eight kind of sit quite nice into a tray obviously mark them up so you know what they are but to be honest with you broad bean plants are pretty obvious and you shouldn't have too many things going on in your greenhouse this time of year so that's the broad beans um, as I said there's eight there I might do a few more uh, just to be on the safe side some spares but uh, I'm not going to grow many more than eight to be honest with you so that's the broad beans another thing you can be doing now um, now this is this is down to personal preference really is you can also be planting your sweet peas I typically grow sweet peas in the spring but what you can do is you can sow them now for next year obviously these are the seeds that we um, saved a few months ago from the from the sweet peas that grew this year what you can do is put these seeds in now in exactly the same way as I've done that um, just get a pot about that big put Put four or five seeds in each pot um, um, with, with some compost. Moist compost like that. Don't water them too much. Leave them in the greenhouse in a warm position, and they will germinate and they'll grow through the um, through the winter months. And you will get a stronger plant for it. Having said that, I don't. Um, I prefer to grow the sweet peas in the spring. And what I do is I grow lots of lots of plants rather than just a few you know with um, so I, I'm not too bothered about the sweet peas to be honest with you but with beans you are much better off planting them now um, let them grow through the winter in the greenhouse and then come sort of March April time um, next year or even possibly earlier than that um, what you can do is as soon as you've got the ground dug over plant these out into the ground um, space them are probably about uh, between 12 and 18 inches apart uh, you will need to support them so what's worthwhile is putting a cane at either end of the um, the row and put some string between so you can just tie the plants up because they will tend to flop over if you're not too careful most certainly as soon as the beans start forming on the side of the plant they get a bit top heavy and they can topple topple over like so what I would suggest you do is plant them um, sort of between 12 and 18 inches apart in rows similar you know sort of eight, 12 18 inches apart it depends on how much room you've got um, you can grow them in a block or in a row I'll probably grow mine in a block block of eight so you know two rows of four you don't need a lot of um, room for that and there should be off, off eight plants there should be more than enough uh, beans for one person if not two or three people um, I thought depends on how you like them but because there's only me and my family that eat them um, it's always important to grow what you like eating um, you know don't grow something because you think you should grow it always grow it because you're going to eat it um, and grow the amount that you're going to eat which is why I always grow lots of um, runner beans and broad beans and stuff like that because I'm not necessarily runner beans and French beans because I know all my family will eat them with broad beans there's only me that will eat them so you know just grow a few okay because you haven't seen it for a while I'll give you a quick whiz around the plot in the greenhouse we've got the beans still drying um, in the greenhouse now obviously what you need to do is make sure that you don't get any mould on that's the biggest enemy that you get the drying beans so what you need to do is just keep your eye on them um, and if you start um, getting mould and stuff like that that's basically because you haven't got enough ventilation now if you've got a greenhouse you know if you're drying them off in the greenhouse make sure you keep the windows um, at least partially open like this um, and you'll um, basically just you know just keep a um, you know, a draft of um, air going through the greenhouse. Like I've got this window slightly open at the back here, and then that'll stop any condensation, which 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 you'll always get at this time of year anyway. So the the cucumber plants here, as you can see, pretty much finished. Um, I've I've not watered them again, so you can see the tray's gone dry, um, and they're sort of drying off. Um, and basically, I'll take these out. Basically, there's no more cucumbers on them. There is a there is a bit of growth at the end here, but there's, there's, it's basically too late to get any more cucumbers. Um, the sunflower seeds have now dry, so I'm now ready to take these out. I'll show you a clip of those um, very shortly. But I'm about to, um, I'm about to take the seeds out of this one here. Um, as you can see, there's a bit of mould forming on the top there, so I need to get these out now. Basically, take the ones out the um, the edge. 
Um, the grapevine, I've picked all the rest of the um, grapes as you can see, there's, a, there's still a couple in there but uh, basically it's all drying out now and the leaves are dropping off so what I'm going to do is um, wait for the, um, the last few leaves to sort of dry, pull all them off and sort of clean it out then what I'm going to do is give it a good trimming uh, making sure that I've got you know any any sort of branches or anything like that that are a bit straggly and stuff like that I'll get them out of the way. Um, the Don Pedro as you can see um, if you compare that to the last clip I showed you um, you can see all the leaves have died off now so basically what I'll do now is I'll put that in the other greenhouse where it's going to be more protected than it is here um, obviously I've collected loads of seeds off but you can see there's plenty of seeds actually dropped um, you can see these black black seeds here look um, so I might pick those up uh, when I move it but there's in the bottom of the pot you can see them if you can see them but here um, there's plenty of black seeds so I'll, I'll just collect the rest of those up um, uh, for planting in the spring but uh, the Don Pedro's kind of died back. Um, the fuchsia is also starting to look like it's uh, the leaves are starting to go yellow and stuff like that and what I will do um, as soon as this is died back I'll, I'll trim these branches right back um, so it, um, it, it encourages it to bush out again next year. So that's basically the greenhouse. Obviously not a lot going on this time of year. We have had some um, alpine strawberries. I don't know if there's one on there at the minute. Uh, you can see here little alpine strawberries. Now they're not the biggest strawberries in the world but most certainly the the best tasting. Um, so uh, the, it's always kind of this time of year that they, that they fruit. The tomatoes, we've still got a few tomatoes in here as you can see. Um, not ripening enough. Um, there's, a, there's a couple at the back um, that are ripening, as you can see these here, but we've had the majority of the um, the, the tomatoes now. Um, but uh, basically those are the last few tomato plants which I've left in. But uh, I've not been watering them now for a month or so, um, because what I wanted to do was, um, you know, if I, if I watered it, it would increase the humidity in here. And obviously I'm drying things in here and also um, the blight and that that I had, and you can see signs of it on these. And these have got bits of blight. So what I'm going to do is, as soon as I've got all the rest of these out, I'm going to clean all the greenhouse out, empty it all out, um, wash all the glass down, um, get it all nice and clean uh, for next year. Then I'll take off the top um, six inches or so of the soil, um, get some jade fluid in here, and uh, clean it all out to uh, minimise the chance of getting blight again next year. So um, outside we've got um, the uh, the comfrey's. Um, started to die back what I'll do is just chop that off and sort of compost all of that the um, the hollyhocks as you can see still in flat, um, um, still in leaf so I'll leave that um, but the first frost will take that out all of this mint and lemon balm and that I may as well cut back now as you can see you know well, pretty much all the leaves have fallen off apart from the the end few um, and this here as you can see it's all kind of died back so I'll just cut all that off to the ground. The sage I'll leave um, as is for now, I'll, I'll just tie that back. Um, I don't want to cut that back quite yet. The um, oregano here, um, I'll just chop all that back to, to the sort of fresh growth at the back. Rosemary, this rosemary bush has been in flower all year. It, it basically started flowering in, I think it was the back end of January or early February and it's been in flower all year round it's it just hasn't stopped and the, there's been bees butterflies and all sorts on there you can see and there's a bee here um, just going on it and when you think you know we're well into um, October now you know and it's still you can see the bees here as well look there's one um, you know it's been a real food source for many insects really but uh, so the um, the rosemary I'm not going to cut that back even though it's even though it's quite big. Now rosemary is one of those plants just like um, another one is um, lavender. They really struggle if you cut them back. Um, what you can do is um, if you are wanting to keep it trimmed, what you need to do is cut it back a little bit every year. Um, but what it will do if you cut it right back. Um, you will basically kill the plant. So um, if you have got a big bush like this and it's getting in the way, what I would suggest you do is cut back some, let it start growing again in the spring and then start cutting it back again and cut it back in stages. Don't go in and you know and have a mad chop down because you, you, more likely than not you'll kill the plant. So rosemary and um, um, things like um, lavender and things like that, they, they really don't do well if you cut them back all in one go. Um, this is where the um, the basil was. Obviously, that's all died back now. Um, this is the other comfrey plant here. Again, that's that's all died back. Um, the asparagus. Really, what I need to do now 
is to chop all this down to the ground. You can see the plants are pretty much finished now. The leaves are going yellow and that. And obviously with the with the wind, um, they will rock it backwards and forwards and basically cause damage. So um, what I need to do um, in the not too distant future is um, cut it all off at the ground, leaving leaving a sort of couple of inches of stumps in the ground, um, and then that'll. Um, that'll overwinter all right like that. What you can do obviously is mulch it, but what you don't want to do um, with um, asparagus is it doesn't like damp conditions. So um, be careful if you mulch it, you know, you don't want the ground to be too damp because you will potentially damage the, uh, the, the, the roots and will basically kill it if you're not too careful. Uh, you don't want the ground to be overly rich either. You want the ground to be, um, you know, obviously some goodness in there, but you want the ground to be free draining. And if you put mulch on, it tends to hold the moisture in the ground. So if you're mulching um, asparagus, do it, ju you know, just a bit. Don't put lots and lots on there because you'll hold the moisture in the ground and that will cause the roots to rot. Right, as you can see, the raspberries are all falling over. What I need to do, I've not tied these back yet because uh, what, I, what I want to do is get in and get all these old um, canes out of the middle first and then tie these ones back for next year. So uh, that's another job that needs to be done. But uh, I've not really had much chance to uh, get up the allotment recently. So what I'm going to do is chop all the old, you can see the dead ones in the middle, um, chop all those out, get them on the bonfire, and then tie the new ones back uh, for next year. Right, um, here we've got the, um, the, the bottle gourd, or the birdhouse gourd, you can see. They're growing quite well still. Uh, we've got a couple of good ones there, some little ones down the bottom here. Um, the most certainly the, uh, the vine is starting to die back now, you can see evidence of the leaves dying back. Um, so I don't think these gourds are going to get massively much bigger than they are now. So uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks or so what I will do is um, come out and uh, pick, um, pick the gourds off, you can see one there, there's one in here as well. Uh, pick the gourds off and then put them inside to dry. Um, Obviously the, there's one plant here and there's one plant over there and then I can basically take the plant out and uh, get rid of it. But the the, uh, the gourds aren't going to grow a lot bigger than they are now. So um, what I will be doing next year if I grow some more is pouring them in a bit earlier. Uh, the two things that I got wrong this year I think were I didn't plant these early enough and also the peppers, the sweet pepper plants, I didn't plant them early enough either. Because uh, they haven't, you know, they've, they've kind of developed a bit too late really in the season to, to um, you know, really flourish. But uh, anyway, that's the birdhouse gourd plant, or the bottle gourd. Um, the potato patch um, is as it was in the last video. I've still got, believe it or not, I've still got a couple of potato plants up there I need to dig out. Um, this bit here I'm just covering over. What I'm going to do is dig this, dig this all over um, as soon as I get five minutes. And then what I'll do is I'll rotivate all of this um, in the winter if I can, dependent on the weather. Um, I'll give this a good rotivation over, put some chicken manure on and um, get all that ready for next year. But the potatoes are going to be pretty much here again um, next year. This tunnel is going to move up to kind of here, um, kind of where it was last year, but probably a little bit further up. What I might do is put some potatoes there and then some potatoes down here as well. But I can't go too far down there with potatoes because the potatoes don't like the ground down there. It's, it's a bit too... Uh, I don't know, a bit too moist for them. Right, the parsnips um, are starting to die back a little bit, but uh, what I'm going to do with, with parsnips, as I've said in previous videos, you're much better off letting them have a frost. So basically what you need to do is they've, they're not going to get much bigger now, so you can start cropping them, um, but if you let them have a frost, they'll be much sweeter and uh, nicer to eat. So what I always do is let them die back in the ground. Um, obviously I've got, the, I've got the rows marked with pieces of string anyway, so I know exactly where they are. They will die back, all the tops will die back. Um, let them have a couple of frosts, um, at least one frost, and then you can start digging them up and eating them. But uh, parsnips are doing pretty well. We've, I've not had a bad year with parsnips to be honest with you. Right in here, this is the first tunnel. Now the spinach is doing re reasonably well at the moment. Obviously we've still got these bits here that are bolted. Um, but uh, this, this second row of spinach I've put in here um, is really starting to grow now. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. Um, the, as you can see, the, the kale is also doing really well. What I need to do is tie these back a little bit. But uh, we have started to eat the kale. I have got some white fly on there, uh, not, nothing too much. I have sprayed them with, um, uh, with sugar soap um, a couple of times, but the, uh, the white fly seems to be a little bit persistent. Now, what we've got here is these, these sort of ready plants 
here, these are the um, uh, the cabbage sprouts, and as you, I don't know if you can see, um, they are starting to form on the side here. So hopefully, um, last year they didn't grow particularly well. They uh, they grew like they are now, and then they didn't develop any further. So hopefully, I'm going to get some uh, um, some um, flower sprouts this year. But uh, anyway. So the kale's doing alright, the spinach isn't too bad, obviously this has all gone to seed here, so this is basically going to go for chicken food. Uh, the chickens love the, the spinach when it's run to seed, so what I'll do is I'll chop this down, put that in the, uh, the chicken. The, the um, broccoli or the calabrese here um, didn't do very well at all. We did get three or four meals out of it, um, but as you can see, a, a lot of it kind of ran to flour. Um, it, didn't, it didn't really come too, too well, so I shan't be growing that variety again. So that's the first tunnel, <coughs> a little bit overgrown I know, but uh, still growing quite nicely. Uh, it'll still taste the same. Um, right, and as you can see here, these are the, the pumpkins and the courgette plants. These have all really died down now, so I can fetch all these out um, and uh, dispose of the plants now. So I, I have been cleaning it out bit by bit. Um, the uh, rhubarb, as you can see, has died right back now. I have still got a couple of pumpkins in here. Um, there's a little, little teeny one there. So I will go and put that in the shed um, later today. But um, I've left it on the vine, but now the vine's died. That's, that's not going to get much bigger now. So, um, but that's, the, that's where the, uh, the rhubarb is, or was. Right, in here, this is the third lot of spinach. Um, this is the um, calabrese. Obviously, it's all run to seed now. Um, but this is the um, the spinach here, and this is really starting to take off now. There's a few weeds in here I need to get out. But um, the uh, the spinach we have had quite a few meals off this spinach now, so I've been picking this spinach here. There's been a couple that have gone to seed, but uh, we've been picking the spinach now for a few weeks, and um, it is growing really well. Um, this is the same calabrese as the one in the other tunnel. You know, it's it, it's not done that well. It it, it kind of I don't know. It kind of developed um, into small heads kind of like that um, and rather than you know forming you know the bit that you want to eat uh, it just kind of went from that straight to the flower so it's it's, it's not really uh, a good variety to be fair right that's the second tunnel all right moving around here I've, I've taken all the canes out here and the uh, the sunflowers they'd all finished um, so that's one of the jobs I did a couple of weeks ago. Um, I left the um, calendulas in um, so they could drop the rest of the seed on the ground. Um, I think they've pretty much done that now so I can clear all the rest of this out. And I'm kind of halfway through taking the beans down as you can see. Um, these ones are still here. Um, I, I left these here because they were being protected by the, by the tunnel there. Uh, but all of these beans here I've taken out. I've just left the, um, the, the, uh, the stalks on the, uh, the side there. Um, the, the vines. What I will be doing is just letting them dry out and then I'll put these on the bonfire in a couple of weeks. Um, this is the uh, mashua. You can see it's still growing and we're actually getting a few flowers on it now. Um, as you know it's in the um, it's actually in the nasturtium family. Um, so that's, that's that they've grown really well this year so I'm hoping when I dig the roots up, which is the part that you eat, the like kind of carrots about um, sort of four or five inches long with white with purple purple bits on them um, so hopefully I'll get plenty of um, good sized roots on there to have um, over the winter but that's the uh, the mashua um, obviously all the beans here have gone and this is the other side of the um, parsnips and this ground here is really um, sort of clear under here that's why I've been covering it with plastic we have had loads of rain recently so it's not been the best weather to come up the allotment uh, as I say, there's, there's still a few, um, the sort of four-part rows here of potatoes to dig out, um, but I'll be I'll be digging these out in the next few weeks, as and when I get time. Um, this is the other um, bottle gourd um, plant. I can't seem to see any at the moment. There were some on there. There are some small ones. Uh, the big one that there seems to have vanished. Um, but anyway, the. Uh, not doing too badly. Uh, there were actually some. I seem to have lost all the gourds off this one for some reason. Um, there's still a few apples on the on the tree. I have picked some already, but um, the uh, there are still some apples, so I'll be um, taking them down in the next week or so. But uh, anyway, that's the uh, the apple tree 
and the pear tree and everything down here as soon as I've got these raspberries done um, what I need to do and got these vines out of the way is because um, these the espalier um, trees what I need to do is obviously there is some growth on there so what I'll need to do particularly on the um, on the jostaberry bushes here um, is sort of trim them back because they've they've got loads of shoots and branches on that basically shouldn't be there so what I'll be doing is sort of trimming all them back um, you can see the um, the cherry tree in the middle has got these shoots so they need to either be tied in or um, cut back and, and sort of whatever else so that's that. The beans that were here, as you can see, this is where most of the activity has been going on here. Uh, I've been reconfiguring the path here. Um, and this is one of the main reasons why you've not seen any videos for the last couple of three weeks. Um, I'm putting another greenhouse in here, uh, which is another eight foot wide greenhouse like, like this, this one here. Um, so what I've been doing is I've been moving, believe it or not, to do this I've had to move 20 slabs. I've had to take them up off the path down there and move them here because I needed... Um, two and a half foot slabs um, to make the to make the right pattern for the um, for the greenhouse to sit on. So there's go there's going to be an, another greenhouse here um, shortly, and there will be some videos coming out on that. I have been videoing what I've been doing it, but I've not obviously put them together yet. Um, so look out for those; they'll be coming in the next few weeks. But um, there's going to be another greenhouse here, um, and then this back bit here. Uh, I'm not quite sure what's going to be going on with this um, next year, but. Um, what we've got in here at the moment is these are the um, Yakon um, and you can just about see the the tubers there so that's that's the Yakon there now what you're supposed to do with these is um, wait for them to have a frost now the the one that was in the middle here um, just there actually snapped off in the wind the other day that's why I've got all these poles holding it all up um, they're, they're about kind of 10 foot high now 8 to 10 foot high um, so what I'm going to be doing with these is um, just cutting them off at the ground, leave about four inches on the ground. Again, just like the parsnips, let them have a frost and that sweetens up the, uh, the starch in the, uh, the vegetable. And then you can dig them all up out the ground. Um, and obviously there's one plant here, there's one plant there and one plant there. And that's the, basically, it's the root, sort of this part here that you eat. Um, so that you can see the, the actual tubers in there. No, I'll be saving some of the smaller ones for next year to plant again and then all the large ones I'll be eating those. What we've got um, in here are the, uh, the little coloured potato type things. Um, a colour. Now I'm, I'm going to be digging these up in the not too distant future but they're all here. That's These, these plants here, they kind of look like a bit like a begonia. Um, as you can see these are grown really well this year. Um, I don't know what I'm going to get onto the ground. Um, I'm not going to tent Providence either because last year I had some pretty good tops on them. Um, I don't know if you remember, but when I dug them up, there wasn't a lot under the ground, to be honest with you. So um, I'll be digging, digging these up in the next few weeks when I get five minutes. Um, but that's what the allotment looks like. Uh, I think we're on the 26th of October today. So that's what it looks like at the minute. Sorry, quick addition. All these are obviously, th this is the second green house. We've still got the pumpkins right enough there ready for Halloween. Um, as you can see the jalapenos there are now starting to turn red so I'll be finishing harvesting those um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, the sweet peppers, I don't know if you can see but there's there's plenty of sweet peppers in here. Now these are the ones that really I should have um, grown a bit earlier. Now there are some paler ones as well I was hoping that this would turn yellow or possibly red or orange but um, I think I'm going to have to pick them because the weather's getting the way that it is at the moment. Um, I think I'm going to have to pick these green. Um, obviously, they all start off green, and then they, you know, they will change to either yellow or whatever as they're developing. But um, I was, I was hoping that this may turn yellow, and these ones here. But uh, by the look of it, I think I'm going to have to pick them as the green. But there's loads of fruits on there, as you can see. There's a good. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine. Um, 10, there's about 10 um, sweet peppers on there. The, uh, the cucumbers in here are still going, as you can see. Um, these ones are still going quite nicely. Um, for some reason this one's gone curly, but uh, we are still getting the odd cucumber um, off the vines, and obviously we've got some peppers in here as well. There, the jalapenos uh, just growing at the back there. But uh, anyway, that's what the other greenhouse looks like. So, I hope this episode has been of some use to you. Please don't hesitate to put any comments you've got, you blow, and I'll always get back to you. And I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Love and Garden.